a live shot of our nation's capital, a hot spot these days, not just because of the congressional inquiries, but also regulations targeting certain industries. New York City is moving forward with plans to ban sales of nearly all flavored e-cigarette products after weeks of delays. This, as President Trump today, is holding court with outside stakeholders on the issue of youth e-cigarette usage and the possibility of government regulation there. Industry, advocacy, nonprofit, medical, government groups, you name them, they're all expected to be in attendance today. One group that is curried favor with the president on the issue is Grover Norquist's Americans for Tax Reform. Now, the group's head of vaping policy out with an editorial earlier this year on the issue, one that caught the president's attention. Quote, banning flavored e-cigarettes might cost Trump the re-election. So joining us now from Washington, D.C., in a first on CNBC interview, Director of Strategic Initiatives for Americans for Tax Reform, Paul Blair. Good morning, Paul. I got to say, when I saw the headline there, I was shocked as well because I'm thinking to myself, how can vaping really swing the election? Take us through the thesis. Why is this such a key issue for President Trump? It's a great question. And for viewers who either aren't smokers or have never used e-cigarettes or haven't used e-cigarettes to quit smoking, it might sound really weird that this is an issue that could be a significant political issue um, either in 2020 or in state late races or federal races. The reality, though, is that in 2016, when we first conducted polling on this issue among adults that use these products, we found that three out of four adults across the country, at the time there were probably about 10 million according to FDA and CDC data, that three out of four of them were single issue voters, that their vote moving issue uh, for who they were going to select as a political candidate at the federal or state level was where a politician stood on questions of access to vapor products. That poll has been replicated um, by actually one of uh, Donald Trump's campaign pollsters, John McLaughlin, uh, just past month, this, this past month, showing essentially the same thing, that more than 80 percent of the adults that use these products are single issue voters. Uh, and by the way, it's not only 10, 15, 20 people that use these products. We now have data from the FDA and CDC that shows at least 13 million American adults use these products. And so when you add up the number of adults that feel deeply passionate about access to these products because they attribute them to saving their lives because they've been able to successfully transition away from cigarettes onto lower risk alternatives in a state like Michigan, where Donald Trump only won by 10,700 or so votes, where there are more than 420,000 adult vapors uh, who have used these products again to quit smoking or, or reduce their use of cigarettes. It is a significant political issue that, that certainly in some swing states, as we've argued to the White House and to the campaign, um, could have a major impact on the outcome uh, of the election next year. All right. So, so fair enough. I, I understand the adult usage issue and I understand that those people vote and, or might vote or, or, or would be interested in voting there. But the issues around the vaping kind of epidemic have centered not such around maybe the adult side of things, although it is it is big, but it's around teen usage of these products. And that's the reason, that's the reason why President Trump has kind of turned his attention to this. How exactly does that play out, though? Because teen usage is a key issue here. Absolutely. And uh, I think it's first important to note that reported past 30 day use of cigarettes among teens, for example, fell at the largest decline in American history, 28 percent this year. And so while it's certainly important to look at what teens are experimenting with, the proposition and the question is, do we focus on teen experimentation with products at the cost of restricting adult access to products? And there are policy proposals that have been provided to the administration and to Congress that could address the teen use question. In the United States across the country, you already have to be 18 to buy these products. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is pushing an effort that raises that age to 21, and that's a proposal that's been endorsed uh, by the president um, as recently as two weeks ago. And so there are also opportunities to restrict marketing and advertising of products to ensure that there aren't silly uh, brands or IP violations for companies in terms of the use of cartoons and, and silly things like that. Those are all reasonable restrictions that the federal government could place on this industry without removing these products from the market, particularly for the products that are being successfully used, um, flavored products that are being successfully used to transition adults away from these products. And so, again, it is important to focus on uh, teen experimentation, but it can't come at the cost of adult access. All right. So, so let's talk a little bit about whether or not we can kind of button this up here. We, we talked about the number of stakeholders that will be present at this particular meeting to talk about vaping. Are they going to be able to address the numbers that the CDC puts out every week with the increased number of deaths and illnesses 
tied to vaping when the Centers for Disease Control still does not really know what is causing all the illness. Well, actually, a November 14th announcement from the CDC finally provided the sort of clarity that we've been talking about uh, in this space for about three months. And what they found is that of all of the cases uh, that they've tested products where individuals either got sick or an individual using a product um, ended up uh, passing away, um, what they found is a product called vitamin E acetate, an additive that's added to marijuana and THC products that individuals vape. And so that is a completely different conversation than nicotine or commercial nicotine products that you find in vape shops or convenience stores. And so I hope there's an opportunity to address that because the CDC has finally admitted that it's not flavored e-cigarettes that are getting people sick. It's marijuana and THC products that people get from their friends on the black market and from drug dealers. Um, and it, it certainly took a few months for the CDC to get there. The FDA was a little more out in front on this, um, but it is an important issue to address because it, it goes to uh, the question of, of conflating the use of two different products and over-regulating one industry because there's a misconception about the use of a product in a completely different industry. All right. Paul Blair on vaping. Thank you very much. We'll be kind of following those developments very closely out of Washington, D.C. We appreciate it.